Hello everyone, good day. We will be discussing colligative properties as part of the lecture series on solution chemistry. So let's start by discussing our intended learning outcomes. So our intended learning outcomes are to describe the effect of solute concentration on various solution properties such as vapor pressure, boiling point, freezing point, and osmotic pressure. And we are also expected that after this discussion, you will be able to perform calculations using the mathematical equations that describe these values colligative properties. So what are the colligative properties of solutions? So colligative means the collection or collective. So it only uh, it's a property that's only dependent on the number, not on the identity of the solute particles in an ideal solution. So some of the colligative properties of solutions include the non, uh, vapor pressure lowering, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and osmotic pressure. And colligative properties of solutions are applicable for non-volatile and non-electrolyte solutes. So when these non-volatile and non-electrolyte solutes are added to our solvent, the so solution properties are, are affected by the amount of the solute of the solute added to our solvent and the resulting solution has uh, these colligative properties so the, let's start with the vapor pressure lowering but first let's define what is vapor pressure so vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by a vapor in dynamic equilibrium so it measures its tendency to vaporize so non-volatile solute lowers the vapor pressure of a solvent so you can see there the diagram showing the uh, what happens in a molecular level. So that the pre so you can see there the presence of a non-volatile solute particles in a liquid solvent results in a reduction of the vapor pressure above the liquid. So Rolf's law uh, relates the observed vapor pressure of the solution to the mole fraction of the solvent and the original vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So the observed vapor pressure of the solution is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent multiplied by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So Rolf's law applications include the aerosols, the uh, pressure cooker, uh, the mechanism of pressure cooking, and distillation. So another colligative property that we will discuss is the boiling point elevation. So a non-volatile solute elevates or increases the boiling point of a solvent. So you can see there in the diagram what really happens. So the solute particles, the red, red ones, prevent the liquid particles from escaping the system to turn into gas. So in order to break the bonds or to, of the uh, liquid, it requires more energy to become a gas. So that uh, translates to a higher boiling point of our uh, solution. So it is uh, related there in the formula. Uh, delta Tb. So delta Tb is the uh, boiling point uh, elevation. Delta means the change. So uh, it's equal to the molal boiling point elevation constant and the molality of the solute in the solution. So you can see there the boiling point of the solution. Uh, the change in boiling point in the solution is equal to the boiling point of the solution minus the boiling point of the pure solvent. So that's how it's related. But usually we are only looking for this uh, the value of uh, the change itself. So the delta Tb value. So what are the real life examples and applications of boiling point application? So cooking or make to tenderize meat, making candy and coolants added to uh, automobiles. So another colligative property that we will discuss is the freezing point depression or lowering. So when a solute is dissolved in a solvent, the freezing point of the solution is lower than that of pure solvent. So this time, we are looking for the depression or the decrease in the freezing point, the lowering. And it's also related to the, to the uh, following, to the constant, the molal freezing point depression constant and the uh, molality of the solute in the solution. 
So the diagram there on the left shows that the particles in red, the solute, they can't uh, immediately shift into the liquid, liquid phase at the normal freezing point temperature because the solute particles block movement from the solid phase to the liquid phase. So real-life examples and applications of freezing point depression include uh, antifreeze, the concept of antifreeze, and even salt treatment of icy roads during uh, winter, and ice cream making. So the right most exam application is actually the most uh, relatable in our country. So, so far, what other applications can you think of? So we have already discussed the increase in boiling point and the lowering of the uh, freezing point. So another colligative property that we will discuss is the osmotic pressure. So osmosis is the flow of solvent into the solution through a semi-permeable membrane. So the pressure difference needed to stop the flow of solvent across a semi-permeable membrane is called the osmotic pressure. And the osmotic pressure of a solution is proportional to the molar, molar concentration of the solute particles in the solution. So you can see there the formula, how to derive the, the osmotic pressure in there you can see that it's in atm because usually the gas law constant r is uh, atm so basically this semi-permeable membrane allows some molecules to pass through while blocking the uh, passage of other molecules so the mol the formula there is actually quite easy to remember it's mrt M is the molarity of the solution, R is the gas law constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Okay, so we can see here in the right side some uh, illustration of the semi-permeable membrane. So there, the semi-permeable membrane, of course, there's a pressure that is exerted, okay, the pressure difference that is required to stop the flow of the solvent through the semi-permeable membrane. So what are the real-life examples of osmotic pressure? So it's the pruned fingers, and even in snails and slugs, their mobility, and plant roots. So in summary, colligative properties depend only on the number of solute particles present, not on the identity of the solute particles. That's one of the reasons why, uh, that's also the reason why the formulas are usually a uh, only uh, you are required to know the mole fraction of our solute because the amount is the one that we, it is uh, the, the amount of solute particles present is very important in computing our colligative properties. So that would be the concepts for colligative properties.